Okay, so who almost forgot that this game was coming out? No, seriously. Microsoft seems to have as well. With the amount of marketing this sequel has received, or lack thereof, I should say, it's almost as if they're shipping this game off to die. That honestly might be the case here, since Hellblade 2 is just as bland and tedious as the original, if not more. Being a linear, seven-hour experience, you'd expect a dense, layered adventure full of interesting twists and turns. Instead, Hellblade 2 gets players to trot around bleak-looking environments, solving half-decent puzzles, and taking part in battles that will bore you to tears after the first couple of encounters. Yes, it is cool how Senua now skillfully executes each enemy after they've been smickety-smacked around enough, followed by a flashy transition from one enemy to the next. However, therein lies the problem. Every single battle boils down to a one-on-one -on -one contest which barely requires any strategic thought. Casually block a few times, spam some light and heavy attacks, and Bob's your uncle. Don't even worry about your surroundings now. Simply wait for an attack pattern to end and start wailing on them to win. Rinse and repeat. To make things even easier, Senua can temporarily slow down enemies like the original game and essentially mash buttons for the most basic of basic combos until they're defeated, making the Dal combat more mindless than it already is. All these aspects considered, hardly any of the game's opponents will give Senua a run for her money, even on the highest difficulty. Since it only takes a few seconds to figure out a foe's attack patterns, you'll find yourself interrupting and dodging assaults in no time at all, especially since this sequel has a severe lack of enemy variety and bosses as well. The game's puzzles present a similar problem too. Most of them involve Senua seeking out three seals in the environment or finding these orb thingamajigs to manipulate the world around her. The last one is a lot less exciting than it sounds. There are a few cool set pieces that Senua needs to overcome and a neat puzzle that's all about keeping a torch lit above water, but those are about all the good ones I could remember. For the people who weren't too keen on the inward, self-reflective story of the original, this sequel won't do much to intrigue them. In fact, I could not care less about it if I tried. It seems as if the devs didn't either, since there's barely any meaningful character interactions or moments that will compel you to keep playing. I'll admit, the acting is quite strong, but the overall feeling of the narrative is like when a person tells you that someone you've never met just passed away. Your level of emotional investment will be minimal at best. This story tries to tell a very somber tale of self-empowerment and learning to rely on others, but it doesn't really end up saying anything of substance at all. Fortunately, the game is optimized rather well on PC, something I don't say every day. While I do not have an absolute beast of a rig, I was still hitting around 55 to 60 FPS on the maximum settings with DLSS on balanced. The graphics, particularly in the eyes and movement of the characters, look fantastic. The binaural audio and Senua's inner voices sound really cool too, especially on headphones. Although, what is up with the constant letterboxing? I never thought those forced black bars looked good during gameplay, and I still think the same here. At the end of the day, Hellblade 2 doesn't give you enough reasons to care. Whether it be the dull, unevolving combat, or its flat, forgettable story and characters, there just isn't much to latch onto here. Apart from some adequate puzzles and set pieces sprinkled in, the impressive visuals and performance capture only take it so far. Try it on Game Pass if you're a fan of the original, but for everyone else, you're not missing much.